والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم brother said from the united arab emirates he said uh, i went uh, with a certain group called jamaat at i went to spend several days out with them in different mosques calling to allah spent 10 days once and 3 days another time um, I really felt good while doing this, giving da'wah to people, calling them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, recently I've been told by a friend of mine that this is not from the sunnah, uh, this is not from what the, the Salaf al-Saleh did, this is not from something the Prophet did. did. Um, what do I do? I'm confused. How do I go about to carrying on my tasks? First of all, brothers and sisters, this ummah, the ummah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a praiseworthy ummah, and it was praised in the Qur'an. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained the reason. He said, You are indeed the best ummah sent to mankind. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. Why? He began by saying, Ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah. To emphasize on the importance of giving da'wah. You enjoin what's right and you forbid what's evil. What's da'wah? Da'wah is all about enjoining what's right and forbidding what's evil. Al-amru bil-ma'roof wa nahi al munkar And by the way, a da'wah is an issue which is mandatory on every single Muslim, male or a female. There is no distinction between the uh, uh, scholar and an ordinary person. Everybody must give da'wah, everyone according to their capacity mm-hmm. and according to their limit of knowledge and how much they have access to give da'wah. But the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said in two ahadith, which these two ahadith do not exempt anyone from giving da'wah. The first in a sound hadith, مَنْ رَأَى مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِلِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ أَضَعْفُ الْإِيمَانِ Whoever of you sees something wrong, evil, mistake, a sin, let him change it. It is mandatory upon you to change it. By any of these methods, the first one is biyadi, and the hand in this uh, first category refers to authority. If you are an authoritative person, if you are an official, if you were given this power, you must stop this munkar which you see under your guardianship. What if you can't because you don't have the authority? Then, bilisani, enjoining what's right and forbidding what's evil by giving the advice, the sincere advice. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith of Tamim ibn Ams Awsan al-Dari Ad-Din al-Nasiha Deen is all about paying the sincere advice Then the third That if you don't have the power of giving a lecture Or preaching, of enjoining Or you're afraid that if you say anything It goes to harm greater than the monkey itself Then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said In the last category Something that did not leave anyone that could be exempted from giving da'wah mm-hmm. by saying فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ أَضْعَفُ الْإِيمَانِ by condemning the munkar by your heart by wishing that the Muslim state will prosper and that the, the salah will be offered on time and people will deal in halal transaction by your heart mm-hmm. if you can neither change it or give da'wah by the hand or by, by the authority or via uh, speaking about it then at least by your heart so there is no specific jama'ah that's taking care of this business. But there are scholars who have a greater duty of informing people about what's right and what's wrong. Then there is muftis who are in the charge of giving the fatwa with regards to haram and halal. So the issue of going out to give da'wah is the job of every Muslim, not just specific people. How? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prays in the Qur'an those who take upon themselves this task by saying, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِنْ مَنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And who is better in statement than one who is da'i إِلَى اللَّهِ da'a إِلَى اللَّهِ and عَمِلَ صَالِحًا and he himself is doing good righteous deeds and he proclaims that I'm just one of the Muslims. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran was commanded, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي Say, this is my way. I call unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on proper understanding, insight, me and those who follow me. 
So if you are a true follower of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then automatically you're following his footsteps on the path of giving da'wah. So everybody must give da'wah. That for going out to give da'wah, may Allah bless you and the brothers who go out with you. But I just have a friendly advice. And next time, brothers and sisters, we don't have to name people and say, tabligh jama'ah, or this, or this, or that. The advice is general. It's for myself and for others. We used to receive the tabligh jama'ah in the States, in North America, in Europe, and they're still doing this. So whenever they come, many of them speak to their emir, that you can always come, and you can always go and visit people, but with the Islamic etiquette, such as, there is nothing that is called that you have to go out every month for three days, or 40 days per life, or four months per year. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not state that at all. And your conclusion of some verses, or some understanding of the hadith, is not a strong reference to mandate the three, or the forty, or the four, based on these references. So you can always give da'wah never. And if people are going out, traveling to another locality, or another community to give da'wah, that's perfectly fine as long as we're not making any innovation. This is number one. Number two, the etiquette of giving da'wah is driven from, is derived from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. So, uh, we're not abide by a single book or by the statement of any person other than the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I held against some people that uh, they, they, they have been stuck to one book such as a book which just the sister mentioned, was talking about the privileges and the virtues of certain acts. And she said the tasbih, and she said it's stated that in Sahih Muslim. It's not in Sahih Muslim. It is a weak hadith. So why do we rely on weak hadith while we have thousands of sound hadith? Why don't we just study Al-Bukhari, or Muslim, or Riyadh Salihin, the Garden of the Pious, the 40 now hadith, etc. The sound hadith. And study the tafsir and study the sound fiqh without being rigid to a certain madhab or certain school of thought. So if we expand a little bit to cover and uh, include uh, other opinions and rely on our references on the sound hadith and we only allow the scholars to speak, it is perfectly fine to have supporters. People who go out, convince people you should stop smoking and convince another person who does not pray. Share with him your experience that how did you come to Iman? How did you start practicing Salah? And uh, the importance mm. of leaving your business whenever it is Friday prayer. It is perfectly fine. But who should speak and give the lecture? A knowledgeable person. And you should be a role model yourself. So it is not possible to listen to somebody who has a convenience store, but he's going out to give da'wah. He's selling beer, but... It is very fixed in his life that every month he has to go three days to give da'wah. Does it make any sense that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَامِلًا صَالِحًا That you have to practice what you preach, or otherwise you'll be condemned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لِمَا تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ كَبُرَ مَقَةً عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ تَقُولُ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ It could be a wonderful opportunity. As many of our brothers, mashallah, now they started doing that. When they collect people and they travel to a specific locality, it is not because it's a must to travel three days every month. Rather, we'll take it as a journey to visit our brothers in another community for the sake of Allah. And when we stay in the masjid or stay in somebody's house, we spend this time in getting to know one another, in visiting people for the sake of Allah, in studying the Qur'an and the sound sunnah. So it will be wonderful if we have a scholar with the group who teach them, or go to visit a scholar so that we have a crash course in a specific science of the deen. These are my friendly and brotherly, lovely advices to my lovely brothers, whom I don't have any doubt that, inshallah, they are sincere in their intention. And Allah knows best. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh.